Well, welcome to our Be Strong show. We are back live and in full effect today at Community Newspapers. And my name is Michelle Shirley. I'm the CEO and Chief Heart Officer for Be Strong International. And I can tell you, walking into the studio today, I'm just so excited to be here. It's been a while, so I miss you guys. Please make sure you follow us on all of our social media pages at Be Strong INTL. If you have not heard of Be Strong, you are missing out. Where have you been, my people? Listen. Be Strong is doing some amazing work in the community, and we're all about heart skills. Everything about healthy relationship development is what we are about. So we want people to move from the state of brokenness that they're in, which is the negative patterns, the traumas, the things that we've gone through that are not allowing us to operate in our best self. How do we move them to wholeness, which means that you're not perfect, but you now have the tools to walk away from the negative cycles and patterns that will allow you from not living your best life, right? And so we are doing that through heart skills education, everything about relationships. So please visit our website, bestrongintl.org to learn more. And I can tell you what we are doing is very impactful work. Um, I recently ran into the U.S. Surgeon General, yes, of the United States at True Foods not too long ago. If you see my LinkedIn page, I took a picture with him there and a team member. But he released recently a study about the epidemic right now of loneliness and isolation. And I can tell you that our work is an integral part of seeing how we can make changes in our communities, all about teaching people how to connect, how to love well, how to look at the patterns that they have and move them again, as we mentioned, to a cycle of wholeness where they feel better about themselves and that they can have amazing relationships in every area of life. So with that said, continue to follow us and learn more about what we're doing to solve this epidemic today. With our host, um, I'm your host today again, Michelle Shirley, and I want to introduce to you our guest, Moppy. Really, her name is Maria Paula. All right. And she is the founder and CEO of The Joy of Impact. So welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Really, really yes, to be. I'm happy to. You got to tell me about Mappy and how that <laughs> came about, because you have two first names. Yes. And I know I'm used to two first names in Jamaica, too, because mm -hmm. they, you know, we have Peter Gay, Kelly, Yan, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Sasha Gay, you know. And so tell me about Mappy and a little bit about you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, my full name is Maria Paula Garcia. Yes. I'm from Colombia yes. originally, and in Colombia we use a lot of people's Ooh. names, right? Yes. <laughs> I have a lot of Colombian team members oh, right oh, now really? who are cheering, yes, yes. That, and in right. the studio. Amazing. Oh, I love it. Yes, go Colombia. Um, so um, so I, I've always been, you know, called Maria Paula, but some people, like in college or high school, used to call me Mappy. And then when I moved here... It was so hard to get people to understand that my name is Maria Paula. You know, like, I, I don't have anything against Maria. Right. I think it's a beautiful name, but it I'm not Paula. Maria. I'm not, yes, exactly. And, and on top of it, Maria Garcia, it's just like, it's, so, it's such a common name, which, again, I don't have anything against it, but I just, it's just not my identity. Right, so right. since I was witnessing people having so much trouble um, going with Maria Paula, I just started, you know, asking yeah. people to call me Mappy yeah. because I definitely prefer for people to call me Mappy than Aww, Maria. So, so nice. it's selfish, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you get but the Paula it, it makes piece me feel in the there, love. and yes. you feel the yes. wholeness exactly, of your name. Yes. Exactly. Oh, yes, that's so that's cute. Important. I love that. Mm -hmm, I love that. Mm -hmm. So I know we initially uh, met at the Children's Trust mm -hmm. um, many years ago, mm -hmm. and then. You know, we reconnected at this event, right? And so I don't know if the person who is the orchestrator of that event <laughs> is watching, but I don't want to put their business out there. But we met at a really great party. Yes. And we missed each other that day, but I know we wanted to connect. And so I'm so glad you're here again. Tell me a little bit about your experience with the Children's Trust, because I know we'll get into a little bit about the nonprofit sector and mm -hmm. how you're working with that. But mm -hmm. I'm almost convinced that the Children's Trust really helped you see what happens in the nonprofit Absolutely. sector. Absolutely. So so as I said, I come from Colombia. I did college there. I studied psychology. 
Then I moved to New York and in New York, I was in the clinical field for a little bit. And then I decided I wanted to do something more sort of in the back end of things. And, um, and I decided to take um, to do a master's in um, public policy and human development. Awesome. So more awesome. going into the research side. And uh, I did that at NYU. And when I finished that, um, I was done with New York. <laughs> I couldn't Aww. do another winter. Uh, I think it's an amazing city. Um, it's of a lot of contrast, and there was a lot that I loved about it, uh, but I was ready for a change. Yeah. So my ex-husband now, but my husband at the time, uh, was able to get a transfer to Miami. So I was just like, okay, yeah. we're, we're out of here. <laughs> uh, so as soon as I graduated, we moved. And, um, and you know, it's, it's tough going into a new city, trying to make connections, trying to network. Mm -hmm. I feel Miami is still very much a city of, you know, relationships. I mean, yes. everything is about relationships. But, um, yeah. but came, coming to Miami was tough as far as not having that network. So I sort of concentrated on that and, you know, everything in life happens for a reason. And I happened to connect to a number of people who recommended the Children's Trust. Mm. So I applied to be a research analyst there. Nice. And that was 12 years ago. Wow. So I worked at the Trust for 10 years. I grew so much there. I started as an analyst and I became a manager. Then I became the director mm. of the Research and Evaluation Department. And it was, as you're saying, just such a complete experience because I really got to, you know, just be exposed to so many different types of services, so many providers. I was very involved in the strategic planning of the trust, so oh, the decisions awesome. about how to invest, you know, the dollars that the trust gets, and then writing the grants and evaluating the grants and then evaluating the programs that uh, our mm -hmm. providers were implementing. Yeah. So it definitely gave me all these, you know, broad spectrum. Yeah. And then it also helped me see, you know, the gaps and the challenges that we have as a community, the challenges that the nonprofit sector has, um, funders also yeah. have in Miami. Yeah. Um, so I guess I got to a point where I felt like in a position as a consultant, I was going to be um, better able to support from sort of another end and to um, help bridge some of those gaps. That yeah. I yeah. Wow. Wow. I know that's I know that was an incredible journey for mm -hmm. you. And now I want to dig in because yeah. I've got questions yeah, and I'm sure in. We're ready. my <laughs> colleagues have questions. <laughs> and one of my questions to you is, is there an association with, you know, the gaps in which you saw? Does it correlate with the size of the entity, meaning that these 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 larger organizations that have the dollars to really invest in like the capacity and the data and the impact. Did you see any correlations where you saw that the gaps were minimized when you saw there was more money um, that a, that a funder or organization had more dollars? Or was well, it across the board? I mean, saw? I, I, the, the, the amount of funding definitely um, supports, right? And, and, and the more money you have, the better able you are to uh, structure services, to also make decisions about the type of services you want to fund, to invest more in quality. Right. Um, I do feel that, um, you know, because of the type of entity that the trust is and uh, because of the provider sort of pool that it serves, um, I feel that the work has very been much concentrated in direct programming, right. which is great. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, that has been a little bit at the expense of building more relationships mm -hmm. and, you know, collaborating more with other funders or other entities. So I do feel that given the limited resources that we have as the nonprofit sort of world in right. Miami, right. Um, it is so important to have more collaboration and not just in the sense that you know we're yeah. friends and we get along and we right. but be strategic about you know how you collaborate how the dollars that all these different funders have are invested uh, in the community yeah. because now on my position as a consultant I work with the small and big organizations and one of the things I've noticed definitely is that you know you know it you know this much better than I do the amount of work that goes into applying for grants and oh putting goodness. applications together and so if we could minimize that as a yeah. community mm. right as a collaborative mm. 
And then also that tied to we as a community have and it's like the trust you don't have a separate strategic plan from other funders in the community, I feel. Mm. I feel that if we all have a roadmap, and I know the mayor has been, uh, Mayor Living Kala of course. has put forth um, a very important initiative with that, a roadmap for like um, early childhood development, which I think everything starts there. Right. So, but if we all, you know, like sort of buy into that and then make intentional decisions to be able to support that in the different areas with the different providers supporting and you know facilitating those processes of getting that funding and then you know really emphasizing and strengthening the capacity for the organizations because i feel that you know helping everybody sort of function better as businesses you know i feel right. nonprofits uh, sometimes you know feel that they or, or don't have the opportunity to function more as businesses. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. Uh, it's so, very, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very important. Yeah. It was, it was just interesting to see because I feel like too, as leaders, mm -hmm. um, we also have to kind of push the importance of data, Absolutely. right? Yep. One of our core values is data talks, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to know, the yes. impact in which your program um, is presenting to the community. Absolutely. And we are revamping even now how we um, address some of the metrics that we currently have. And we just actually had a report done for us mm -hmm. about this very thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, when the grants choke you so much into direct services, yes. And there's so much requirements about what you have to do on the ground. Yes. It's very difficult to have all these other arms at the same time working where you're also trying to, you know, have a data team and track impact. And some organizations that are small just don't have the resources to hire a data analyst, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Much more right. um, to look at trends yes. and what's going on. So, and that's the thing, though. Let me just, if I yeah. can just add something small, like, so if the requirements were truly aligned to your own mission and impact, right, mm -hmm. where you are by right. the nature of what you do and by right. the uh, way in which you have positioned yourself and structure it. Right. If you are able to track your results, and that is, I mean, that's the accountability for the grant, right? So if there is that alignment and if you can, you know, really present your results in a way that will meet the needs of this funder and that funder and this funder, then, yeah. you know, that lessens the burden. But right. it also makes more sense because yeah. then you're, committed and you're 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 excited by yeah. the idea of measuring results yeah so, no, and, then, and then it trickles up like you know it, it really sort of uh, becomes also a measure of the community overall not just that yeah i i think you're spot on and i think one one foundation that i think i know that's doing that and they're really working towards putting you know the trust forward with the leaders mm -hmm. and those providers that have provided those services. I know the Miami Foundation mm -hmm. is really working mm -hmm. towards saying, you know what, we don't want to tell you everything about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. We want you to um, take these dollars and make the impact that makes sense to you and report to us what your challenges are. And I, and it was such a breath of fresh air to mm -hmm. see that for the first time because yeah. typically it's like <laughs> you have to keep. We got a report. That. <laughs> Everybody's got to figure out what we're gonna, you know. And um, it's refreshing to know. And we we were even forthcoming about challenges, and it just felt so good to say, "Hey, this isn't working. We realize, and we're gonna shift gears. But here's what we can promise you." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're right. I think on the funder level. We have to speak yes. to them and say, hey, how can we make these changes? And I think you're going to be a great advocate I for that. So. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about the joy of impact and what it's about someone who's watching right now who's mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm running an organization and I'm telling you so many um, new leaders reach out to me mm -hmm. and they're so excited to talk to me because I'm like, listen, I can tell you exactly what I'm struggling, exactly mm -hmm. what's going on. And it's so refreshing for them to yep. reach back and give them a hand up. And I'm really big on that. Mm -hmm. I want you to share, even with those who might be watching, who are just starting out, what you're about and what small steps they can take to make sure that they're on the right track. 
Hey, we could spend hours <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> talking about We've it. only got 15 minutes. Yes, I know. Um, but um, I guess what I would say, like, I think the conversation we were just having is a perfect transition for that because um, I was very intentional when I selected the name for my company, The Joy of Impact. Mm. And I feel that one of the main reasons was exactly that. While I was working at the trust, I was in charge of a lot of the figuring out how to measure providers, what to ask of you all, you know, how to yeah. create reports and so forth and so on. And what I came to realize was that if we're approaching that from a place of compliance and, you know, requirement and, you know, burden, then we are just totally missing the point. Because the idea is, I believe, I really believe that everybody that gets into the nonprofit area has a passion about helping others has identified an issue that they, they feel is mm. not being addressed or resolved and want to change that. And how do you measure if something is changed? Right. You have to be able to see it. You have to right. be able to document it. You have to be able to measure it. And you also right. have to have clarity on, you know, how is it that you're going about it? Because right. going back to the, the funding, right? If you come and tell me, oh, I realize that there is this need for kids in this sector, in, in this area of the county or whatever, to they need this, right? And I want to help them with that. Uh, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to... And, and, and it's all amazing, it's great. Yeah. right? <laughs> it's, I know it's very well-intentioned, but if you don't have a specific plan as to... What are you gonna do? Oh yeah, the what resources, type of the activities. You need to do it? Right. <laughs> How are you gonna measure it and so forth and so on? Um, it's it's very challenging to communicate what you're doing, even if you're like I what I find fascinating, especially about smaller organizations, also about big ones, by the way, is that you know they're really good at what they're doing, but they have not taken the time to document it in a way that they can communicate it. Mm. So I think mm. a lot of what I do with the organizations that I work with is you know, like, talk to me, like, explain to me what it is that you do, what steps do you take? It's like, we're making a cake, a right? Map. There is yeah. a recipe, yeah. right? <laughs> so how, what do we need to make sure that that cake comes out and it's good and people want to eat it? Um, so I feel that once you have that and you're able to tell your story, then you are going to find, you know, private funders, corporations, not, not everything is grants. That's the other thing that I believe it's important for people right. to realize. Uh, and there is a lot of money in this, um, you know, county Basically, and in yeah. this state, especially now with, you know, all this wealth coming in, where I believe that organizations can really position themselves in a way where they can, again, tell their story, communicate their passion, explain how they are addressing that thing that they're addressing. And then also, you know, like start from a collaborative place. I, I, I love that people are coming to you and that you're sort of guiding them because I feel also a lot of nonprofits start with people assuming that there is not something already there. Mm. And there may be, they may not be the same exact thing that they're trying to do, but for sure, they're going to have partners that they yes. can work with right. to support that. Yeah. So you're not at it alone if you really create community and build partnerships from the get go and then identify where it is that you fit and how we can, you know, move the needle forward. I love that. that. Sounds like a lot, a little bit of strategic planning, too, in that. Yeah, yeah lots yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds great. I'm excited. Thank I could you. talk me to you all day about I this. Know, I love data, right? <laughs> um, and my team sometimes is like, oh, Lord, right, here we go. Um, um, I, I love what you said about the joy of impact. Mm -hmm. And to me, that rang a bell just now because I'm like, I think those who are frontline staff, and those who even with, you know, managers, maybe they're running multiple grants, mm -hmm. they don't always see it as a joy. Yes. It becomes such a burden mm -hmm. based on to the funder that you have mm -hmm. um, that we have had to institute like data parties mm -hmm. and like trainings to just make it fun. And I can tell you that just me looking at some of the reports that are coming in to our agency now. I was speaking with our analysts to say, okay, we've got to make this fun again, right? And so I love the spin that you put on that. Mm -hmm. And people always say, oh, well, you know, I'm not a numbers person or not. But I think when you see the report and you see the data, I think it 
it invigorates you to keep going, Absolutely. right? Yes. The stories. Yes, and it's going back to the, the mission and the yes. passion, the why you're here and the why you're contributing, right? So yes, maybe you are not into necessarily like looking at the numbers every month, but if you as a staff person or as somebody who's working directly with your population, know how you are feeding into that number and how what you're doing day to day is contributing to that, you know, taking it back to that. Yeah, Yeah. it changes everything. And celebrating those numbers, right? Having those quarterly data parties and saying, hey, guys, look, this is what we're doing well, right? Yes. Yes. So you're giving me ideas. Thank you so much for the advice this morning. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm definitely going to connect you to some people that I know that I think um, would love to have you as part of their team. I'm all about connections, and I'm sure today is going to be great for the lead that you could get from this because I think it is spot on what we need right now in the nonprofit sector, everything you're saying. All right. So we are going to switch gears a little bit to our favorite game (laughs) in the entire world. It is called Social Yaks. Mm -hmm. I have it right here. Um, And if you don't know about Social Yaks, we created this game in 2020 and we um, initially launched it last year. And I can tell you the reviews alone from the corporations that we've gone and Mm -hmm. played this with to local community partners to um, families um all walks of life have played this game and the results that we're getting is the increased connection the vulnerability the empathy that's shown especially in the corporate setting where you know you work with someone for eight hours a day and you Mm -hmm. realize that i'm with you half the time that i'm spending you know during the day and i don't really even know you well Mm -hmm. right and so If I don't know you well, I don't get to know how you work and I don't get to know the things that, you know, might aggravate you. And I don't know the things that you work well at Mm -hmm. and what I could give you more of. Right. So it's been an interesting dynamic and we love social yaks. And so if you're interested in learning more, please visit our website. We're going to play this game with you, Mappy, and we're going to start with our first level, which is how much does a polar bear weigh? Oh, my God. Do you know? No, I have no idea. I'm assuming a lot. <laughs> enough to break the ice. Yes, okay. Right? Enough doop, to break doop, the ice. Doop, right? So that's our, that's our intro to okay. the first Let's level, breaking the ice. It's our icebreaker level. Yes. And so go so ahead one, and, yes, right? the blue yeah. one, pick that one up it and matches, read it, it aloud. my quote. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, match. I love this. Um, what makes you feel loved the most? Mm, I just, I, I wanted to say about what you were, uh, you were saying, you know, I just, I, I want to really commend you for doing this. Connection is all about, and what you're saying, the, the, the epidemic of loneliness and isolation in this country is really significant. Mm-hmm. And then the disconnect that we have, especially at work. So, and this also makes me think of that because I have a podcast, yeah. 9 to 5 Joy, mm-hmm. uh, and it's all about, um, you know, building joy in the workplace. I'm clearly a joy person. Uh, but what makes me feel loved, I feel, is what makes a lot of us feel loved, which is, you know, when we feel seen and we can be ourselves. I feel that, you know, there are so many societal standards, expectations that we don't even realize and that we feel we have to conform to and we feel that by conforming we belong and we you know can create relationships and it's the total opposite like the more genuine that we can be the more that we can be ourselves independently of whether we are the ceo or or the person that cleans the bathrooms we have you know that need to be seen for who we are and when we can be who we are we feel loved so um when i go to you know a party, a celebration, <laughs> at an event, and somebody comes to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I saw you do this and that. And it was like, I I, I, I was, you know, so happy to see it, or yeah. I really like that. or I, um, and, and I know that it was coming from that place. It just confirms that I'm doing something yes. right and it makes me feel loved. And you are yeah. doing something right. <laughs> yes. Thank yes. You. Okay. okay. So because of our time, we're going to get yes. to the next one. E, so okay. this is the yak, which is a very social animal, by the way. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to pick up the brown card there. We're going to go a little deeper. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what is your greatest aspiration in life? Ooh. Um, I feel it's all connected. Um, mm. <laughs> okay, my greatest aspiration. <laughs> I have so many aspirations. <laughs> 
Um, I have two little girls. I haven't Aww. talked about my girls. Yeah, they They're are eight. nine oh. and six, Amelia and Eva. And they are wonderful. I love them mm. so much. Um, and you know, they're at this stage where we are like they're more company okay. for me. Like yes. I still have to do a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. But um, but my biggest aspiration is for them to be fully themselves and to so you know good. never lose because I feel kids do have that. Kids, you know, embrace who they are. Yes. <laughs> And then we sort of, you know, put all these things in them. The as demands they grow. on them. Yeah. So I think that allowing oh. them and and sort of nurturing them into never losing who they are mm. inside of what their desires are and what their dreams are and fulfilling them. That's my so good, thing. so good. I love that. And we're gonna get your nine year old in gems. Yeah. Right? We have a gems program. Yes. That we yes. just oh, we just had yeah. a graduation ceremony. Amazing. Oh, I heard about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the next level, we're going to dig a little deeper. This is our third level here. So Ooh. go ahead and pick okay. a card here and have the two of you. Let's see. What's, right. <laughs> What's a life lesson you've learned the, oh, the hard way? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so I've, <laughs> I've been through a period of transition. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess it's the middle age, like, crisis. <laughs> Midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but, um, but I did, you know, I, I got divorced while I was, you know, creating my company while I was. And, um, but the lesson that I learned, though, was a beautiful one. And it's that, you know, but many lessons. But I think one of them is, you know, people are this continuum of things. We as humans have this tendency to categorize and something mm. is good or something is bad and something is pretty or something is ugly. And the reality is all of us have the capability to be this, beautiful and horrible, <laughs> to do amazing things and to do horrible That's things <laughs> and to do things in the middle. None of it defines us. Mm. And nothing that we do has the power to determine who we are right. or what we can mm -hmm. achieve. So, mm -hmm. and I say this because I feel that divorce is one of those things that people, they, they are, it's in the black box, right? It's, it's one of the, um, you know, things that are listed in the, you know, trauma <laughs> assessment yes. that you do to kids. It's just seen as this very negative experience. And to me, it's actually been a beautiful redefinition of my family. Mm. I have the most wonderful experience, like relationship with my ex-husband. Right. We are co-parenting in a mm. way that I'm beautiful. so proud of because the fact that our romantic relationship didn't, right. you know, continue, it didn't fail. It just ended. Right. right? And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that it's good or bad. Right. It was amazing for the right. time that it was. And then it ended. And that doesn't define who we can be mm. as a family. So, so great. And since you're working so much with relationships, and it's all about that. And you define it. We had this conversation when we were getting divorced where he was like, oh, divorce is just horrible and angry. And I was like, okay, yeah, it can be all of that. But it can be also whatever we want it to be. be. Yeah, and so that doesn't good. mean that it's not hard. It yeah. just means that you it, do, it doesn't have value in and of itself. Right. You define it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I feel that that's... Um, you know, a lesson that I'm so glad I learned because I know mm. that it's going to help for the rest of my life because it yes. applies to everything. Yes. Nothing is good or bad. I, I, lo so. I love what you said about that. And I think, too, because, you know, the trends statistically there for divorce, mm -hmm. right, lead to the fact that, you know, what happens when two people are no longer together and they don't have a shift in perspective, mm -hmm. right? It's about perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So what does this mean, right? Because we are going to separate. We at one time bonded very intimately mm -hmm. and shared so much of our lives together, right? But in this separation, how can this be still healthy yes. and thriving yes. and we can be there for our children? Mm -hmm. And it seems like that's what you've done. Absolutely. And that's an incredible feat because I can tell you most people, I'm a child of divorced parents mm -hmm. and it did not work out that way. Right. 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 The, 30 years later, they still don't talk mm -hmm. to each other. Right. Yeah. So I love that you overcame what it could have been. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What the statistics say it should have been. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, everybody to knows be, it to be. I have people that I go like, oh, my, be, oh my, my God, friend. So and they're like, 
What? Right. How that is that? Is weird. Right? <laughs> but this is all about healthy relationships. This is what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Absolutely. That you can take something that could be so traumatic, mm -hmm. that could be, mm -hmm. and turn it into joy, yeah. right? Yeah. High five, girl. Yay. Thank you. High five. <laughs> I love it. All right. The last one. So I, what I love about this game is that after you've opened yourself up, which you did, and thank you for doing that. That's not easy to thank do, especially since we're live, right? Yes, we are live. I forgot about uh, that. <laughs> um, we particularly designed the game in such a way where we kind of seal you again, right? We want to mm -hmm. encourage you at the end. So this is the owl part of the game, Use Wisdom. And it basically says, um, and you would read it, but I'm going to answer it for you. Okay. Um, if I was a movie actor or actress, what type of movie would I be in, right? Oh. So this is me answering it for you. And I immediately walked into the studio because I had to pull my card. You are like Dora the Explorer to me. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever said that to you. No? I, I dressed up as Dora the Explorer in a Halloween. I did. Yes. You did? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling picture, you, I'm gonna send you a I'm picture on because it my these, cousin was boots with these cards every time. Every time I'm in the zone with these with these, these wisdom cards. She's Dora the so Explorer, funny. and I yeah. and I say that because you have the joy in which you have, which is in your business, in your life, in your family. It exuberates wherever you go. I mm -hmm. saw it at that event, even though I didn't get to touch you, meet you. The mm -hmm. smile that you have, the aura that you have, I love it. Thank you. And Dora the Explorer just reminds me of that. She's she's adventurous, she's happy, and she's willing to face those challenges head on and whatever comes, comes, and she'll get through it. And so I see you as that. So You that just made is... me feel loved, so thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so thank we are so going to end our show today on that note. I want you to give any last words to the audience as how they can reach you before we close. Uh, so my website, thejoyofimpact.com. I also am um, on Instagram, The Joy of Impact, LinkedIn, um, and my podcast, 9 to 5 Joy. We are interviewing people from all industries, talking Amazing. all about joy and wellness, and um, I think it could be helpful. So I'm, we're on YouTube now, too, so awesome. everywhere. Like, we'll just... Love Sounds it. great. Sounds great. All right. I love it. Well, I'm here with Mappy from the Joy of Impact today. And again, visit BeStrongINTL.org if you want to learn more about all of our amazing programs, our happy, healthy culture trainings in the workplace that we do with Social Yaks. We're doing so many amazing things. Follow us today and always remember that each day you wake up, you have the chance to start all over again. We love you, blessings, and we're signing off.